Hey guys, welcome to another video with Black Dog School of Yoga. Today I thought I would give you three variations of downward facing dog. It's that pose that is arduous in the wrist and sometimes our hamstrings aren't cooperating. So here are three different ways that you can try it on that will give you length in your back, length in the legs, a lift of your hips and all those nice things. You'll need a chair. I have a yoga chair, but it definitely doesn't have to be a yoga chair. It actually could even be like an ottoman or a stool or something like that. And I would recommend a blanket or a towel just to pat it for one of the variations, okay? So first one, very simply, you're gonna put your hands on the base of the chair. I kind of like to fan my hands out because it gives me more leverage as opposed to putting my hands flat, but it also depends on what kind of chair you have. So from here, You'll just lift up on the balls of your feet and shift forward into a high plank position. Now, as always, just like in downward facing dog on the floor, you want to measure where your hands and your feet go. So hips um, lifted, shoulders over the wrists, and then you'll lift hips up and back, downward facing dog. This is a wonderful variation for those of you guys who have shoulders that get really cranky in downward facing dog. Bend your knees, lift your butt nice and high, and see if you can get that long spine even into a slight back bend. I'm pushing into the chair, like into the wall, so just to give me leverage, long arms, long armpits. And then I'm reaching the inner thighs towards the um, wall behind me. Just taking a couple breaths here, seeing what that yields you. Oftentimes in downward facing dog, we're rounded like this and then we're having to push against the floor and it doesn't go anywhere. So if that's you, this would be a nice variation to try that on. So we're just giving a lift of the arms, taking some of that weight out of the wrists, going all into the legs because downward facing dog is all about the legs. Okay, so that's variation number one. The second one you can try is flip your chair and have the bucket of the chair facing up. Oriented in such a way, if you have a dining room chair that has bars, you'll just have to step over it. Then from here, you're gonna put your feet in the bucket of the chair, hips distance apart, walk your hands forward, same thing. Come into a high plank to measure, ah, that's where my hands need to be relative to my feet. And then lifting the hips nice and high. So this will be a little bit more demanding in your shoulders and your upper back, but it's allowing your hamstrings to just be like, ah, now I can feel downward facing dog without my hamstrings ripping out. So this is a nice variation for the legs, just opposite of what we just did. So those of you guys who have tight upper backs, this is, this is a good work too, but it won't be as freeing for your upper back as opposed to the first variation, okay? All right, and then the third downward facing dog variation is having your chair right up against the wall in the traditional seating fashion. Throw a blanket if you'd wish, that's just a nice padding. And then you're going to put your hands on the floor and crawl up into the chair. You will want a wall for this one. So you can see my feet press into the wall and then my shins are on the chair. You don't want your feet flopping around because this is a point of leverage. Same thing as always, measure. So walk your hands forward, come into high plank, see where your wrists are relative to your shoulders. The hips are in line with the shoulders here. And then you'll lift the hips come into downward facing dog. Your knees will be bent just because you're on the chair. So this is a little bit of both, a little bit of help for the arms and a little bit of help for the legs. Click your feet really strong into the wall like you're trying to make even footprints and then even drag your heels towards the ceiling like you're trying to kick the ceiling. Find the index and thumb of your hands and then wrap your armpits in just a little bit. Okay, so there's three variations of downward facing dog for you to try, see what gives you more access to the pose. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more. We'll see you again soon.